Good morning, Dr. Eric Lindquist here with our sauna minutes next entry. And this is the adrenal approach, the right adrenal approach, and why it is so important to get S-step 14 down and uh, to where you can see the right adrenal gland. This is a dog that was not doing right, a little bit off, a little bit off his food, um, some vague clinical signs, really nothing to speak of. The remainder of the abdomen was fine. And as we approach this, uh, our sonographer, uh, Sherry Raffi, a certified SDEP technic technician sonographer, uh, she's been scanning about three, three and a half years. Um, she imaged this one and, and she learned, she knows the lesson of the right adrenal gland and why we get the whole right adrenal gland. If you think the right adrenal gland, I think of it as kind of your thumb and forefinger together, right? So if you take the top of your, the cranial part of the adrenal gland is always larger than the caudal part, right? So I think of it as your thumb and forefinger. Let's see if I can turn it around there. There we go. So it's like you're thinking your thumb and forefinger together and then the caudal pole is like your finger and the cranial pole is bigger. And the majority of right adrenal pathology, in my experience, comes off this cranial pole because it is, it's just really, um, it's a larger portion of the adrenal gland. And, and it just sneaks into that phrenic vein and goes in the vena cava. And if you don't get that cranial pole, that right adrenal gland, you are going to miss lesions. You're going to miss those field chromocytomas, those carcinomas, the, the phrenic vein thromboses that we see as clinical sonographers all the time. And, and um, it's so important to get this view. And one of the reasons it's commonly missed is because the dog doesn't want you up into that area because it's often right up underneath the right, underneath the right rib. So when you're approaching that right adrenal gland in the S-step 14 position, right? So you get the right kidney, you want it pinned up against the body wall like we have here. So we have body wall and right kidney. It's a big, long dog. So uh, the, it will give, it will give uh, way to a little bit of a, a, a right kidney tilt, but I've obvious, um, what you typically want is the flattest kidney as you can, body wall and kidney, and that's it. Now the duodenum pops in on this dog, but we get away with it because there's nothing in the duodenum to steal our echoes. Because what happens is the right adrenal is going to be in this area right here. You can see it popping in about four centimeters of depth in this big Labrador, right? And four to five centimeters of depth. So here is the right adrenal popping in. I'm going to slow this down. We'll stop it. Here's our right kidney. Body wall, near field is clean. If the near field is clean, your far field is going to be clean. Obviously, the best machine that you can utilize, uh, but you want a machine that's going to image six, seven, eight centimeters of depth with solid quality. But if you have interfering colonic or intestinal artifact or anything else in this near field, it's going to rob all your echoes down here and you're not going to see the adrenal gland. So as you are dropping the tail of your probe, sweeping through the right kidney, keeping pressure on this near field so nothing gets in there to rob your echoes, you get the right adrenal gland right? So here's the right adrenal and it's a little lumpy and it's 14 year old Labrador can have a lumpy adrenal. That may just be normal variant. But what I don't like about this is the enhanced fat around the right adrenal gland. Fuzzy fat, you know, I talk about this all the time. The fuzzy fat attaches to the pathology. We know this is clinical because the fat is enhanced. It's fairly subtle, but we can see it. And it's not far field enhancement because it's in the near field associated with this right adrenal gland. You can see I'm losing corticomedullary definition here. But if you do not have this sort of definition on your machine, you'll blow right by this and think, okay, yeah, I saw the right adrenal. It's all done, right? Because I mean, it's still thumb and forefinger or, or arrowhead type shape. Older dog, yeah, sure. That's what they do. They get older, they get lumpy adrenal glands and so forth, but maybe not. And this is why you need to have solid resolution on your machine and solid technique with a clean near field. So you see these changes. You do not see these changes you are going to miss lesions. And what is the cost of missing a lesion? Think about what happens now. I did, let's say you just call your resolution is, is okay. And you kind of see this, okay, this is an old dog, right? Adrenal, no big deal. Okay. And then you go on, there's nothing really going on with this dog. Maybe we chase orthopedic pain or CNS disease, or he's just getting old, whatever. And then it goes down the road to somebody who maybe sedates this dog further and gets in there with a better machine or better technique 
And then they start seeing these things that I'm talking about, this enhanced mesentery, this irregular contour here, which is so important to watch the curvilinear disruption going on inside the right adrenal and in the capsule and the enhanced fat around it. These subtleties are so important because watch what happens. Okay, sweep the right kidney, drop the tail of the probe, the right adrenal comes in. Okay, great. But I'm going to pay attention to that right adrenal. I say, eh, that's a little irregular. Let's go in. Is it just old dog adrenal or is it something else? We power Doppler the kidney. Nice, good blood flow for an older dog kidney. That's pretty good. I'll take it. But then we get in there a little bit further. Look at the near field here. You keep the pressure on in with the back of your hand so the near field is clean. You use this vena cava as a window. And this is why we use the vena cava as a window. Look at this right adrenal gland. It's fairly lumpy and maybe this is just an old dog adrenal but maybe not because look what's going on over here here's your phrenic vein beautiful imaging by sherry right phrenic veins right here and look what it opens up into this is all tumor coming off of this right adrenal which is just a little lumpy but it's actually either a pheochromocytoma or adenocarcinoma because that's what invades by definition. So you have your aorta down here, your vena cava here, your vena cava actually expands up over this invasive part of the tumor coming on through. Adrenal glands are sneaky, especially the right adrenal. And if you sweep right through here and say you saw the right adrenal and this is going on, what's the cost of missing that lesion? Okay, what's the cost of that? What happens next? Goes down the road. They find it. Owner comes back. You didn't scan him right. Blah, 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 blah. Now I have an adrenal tumor that's in there that could have been taken out. Maybe, you know, you don't want to be on the back end of that phone call. I don't want to be on the back end of that phone call. Get it right the first time. Buy the machine that you need to get the resolution down to six, seven centimeters. Utilize the technique correctly so you are not the one that misses this lesion because this happens all the time, guys. This is the tough love moment of sauna minutes. I want you to get this lesion the first time every time. I never want anybody in our veterinary community, especially in the sauna path community, missing this lesion because you don't want to be on the back end of this. You don't. And if you, it's just technique, guys, and machine. Invest in the right machine. Get the technique down. Use this vena cava as a window. Make sure your near field is clean and get into that right adrenal and don't miss this lesion. Now we'll look what Sherry does with it. Boom. Vascular, highly vascular, typical of pheochromocytomas. They love blood flow. And you can see this is the flow coming in from the vena cava, but this is the flow of the tumor, right? Coming off of that right adrenal. If this were just a lumpy nodular hyperplasia adrenal, it's not going to draw this blood flow. It doesn't need it. But when you're screaming pheochromocytoma getting into that, into that vena cava, you're going to draw every ounce of blood flow that you can. That's what they do. The FIOs have their own personality and they love blood flow. And get into this thing even further. Now, this is why we have video. Because if you take all of this out, right? If we just focus on, let me see if I can blow this up. We just focus on this little lesion right here, right? And we forget about all this. We just call that a nodular adrenal. But it's all the rest of this that makes all the difference, right? All right. So if we just do this, we look at this right adrenal and we just measure it out, looks pretty darn normal. Nodular hyperplasia, 14-year-old dog. They do this all the time. But this is who you want to be right here. Cable thrombus tumor, right adrenal gland, and image it like you properly should, okay? And make that your calling card. Put that on your report. Show them who you are. You've done the effort. You've invested in a proper machine. You have made the effort to do the S-step or equivalent protocol to where you're not going to miss a lesion. So demonstrate it. Blow up the image. Put it on your report, okay? And know what does that, right? From a clinical sonography standpoint, what does that? Invasive adrenal tumors are either pheochromocytomas or adenocarcinomas. And you can confirm it. Obviously, blood pressures, pheos are typically going to run systolic pressures over 180, usually in the 200s, run a urine catecholamine and confirm pheochromocytoma. If he's Cushingoid, 
and is mineralized invasive, then adenocarcinoma. But those are the two main tumors that invade the bean kidney. Hope you enjoyed our sauna minutes and our tough love for the day. Go out there and scan that right adrenal and make yourself proud. Hi guys, it's Dr. Eric Lindquist, CEO and founder of saunapath.com. And I'd like to invite you to pass through your surgical or commuting day in veterinary medicine by listening to our podcast, Real Talk in Veterinary Medicine from experienced professionals who aren't afraid to tell you how things really are so you can optimize your veterinary career and your process.